there's a place that you want to go and chase big pronghorn and lots of them, New Mexico is the place to do it. Bryce, let's get this thing unloaded. On this trip, I'm hunting with Bryce DeForest. Bryce is from Boise, Idaho. I'm from Bozeman, Montana. We've met each other a couple times. We've known each other very well through interaction on some of the hunting websites. When Randy Newbird came up to me and asked me to go on this archery antelope hunt in New Mexico, he didn't have to ask twice. On each side, there's a hub that comes off that one. Uh -huh. Drawing a tag in New Mexico is like most of the other western states. They have a drawing deadline that is usually sometime in April. And in there you can put in for three, whether it's rifle or muzzle loader or archery. And in June you find out if you drew. And in this case, we lucked out and we drew our third choice. For pronghorn junkies like Randy and Bryce, archery hunting in New Mexico brings both exciting thrills and difficult challenges. It's the middle of August and hunting from a blind would be like sitting in an oven. So Randy and Bryce decide to employ spot and stalk tactics, a method that'll prove to be much more difficult than it sounds. As part of the On Your Own Adventures website, Randy runs a forum called Hunt Talk, where he blogs and posts updates on his adventures. On this hunting trip, Randy is posting updates in real time, allowing people from across the country to follow along vicariously from their homes. It's a nice one right here, I think. Any antelope tag in New Mexico is pretty difficult to draw. If you want to increase your odds in New Mexico, go to one of the other more primitive weapons, whether it be muzzle loader or archery. And we'd rather be out here with the difficulty of archery hunting than to be sitting at home wishing we had a rifle tag. Well, you won the flip, I guess. <laughs> so you get to shoot first. When we got here, we knew instantly that we were in a good place because we saw a lot of antelope. Holy cow. That is a big one. Where we're hunting here in New Mexico, we're in what's called the Plains of St. Augustine. It's an ancient dry lake bed. And a dry lake bed is a very flat place. The good part is it's full of antelope, lots of antelope, lots of really nice antelope. New Mexico has these units around here managed very conservatively. So you get a lot of older age class bucks. The other part of it is there is a large amount of public land on the plains. So if you draw a tag for archery, you're able to hunt any of that accessible public land. From the road over there, we That's can a get a idea. better angle and a better stocking. Yeah, they'll, from... they'll be close. They'll stay right there, I think. Oh, I'm sure in the morning. Good idea. When the hunt started, we, we were day early. We did some scouting. We'd driven around. We found lots and lots of animals. And we had picked two or three bucks that each of us had liked. I told Bryce, I said, I think we can spot and stock these animals. He humored me by saying, oh yeah, yeah, I'm sure we can. Archery hunting in itself is just something that I've come to enjoy. There's something about just being close to an animal. A little bit more stealth, there's a lot more factors play into archery hunting. My experience with archery antelope hunting before this hunt has been frustration squared. So I, just from the beginning by saying I'm gonna spot and stock this, I've probably stacked the cards against me to a point where I'm gonna go home with my tag in my pocket. I don't hunt without coffee, Bryce, so bear with me. I was drawn to Randy. He knew what he was talking about when it came to hunting. Right there is good for a big buck. He's an antelope junkie, and I knew that if, if I wanted to go antelope hunting with anybody, it would be Randy. Because over here is where we saw that one bedded yesterday. Yeah, big yeah. And they were headed out this way, right? So we should probably the winds kind of steady. I have to say we curve east. I'm one of those guys who've chased antelope all my life, and I love doing it, and I've chased them with the bow a lot. I see this one right here that's not too far away. But I've never had success archery antelope hunting. There he is, he sees it. See him? He sees us, but I can't tell. It's been pretty tough to get close to these today. They're, I don't know if it's just a flat ground out here, but they're seeing us come from far away and they're getting up and walking away. They're not really taking off. I was confessing to Bryce that, you know, maybe my grandiose ideas that we're gonna spot and stock these antelope might have to be put on the shelf. And it had nothing to do with 
you know, our abilities. I think the problem was just the terrain, the wind, they've been hunted. It was just, it all came together and making it really tough. Bryce, being an experienced guy he is, said, well, let's go find some of these fence crossings and let's set up some blinds. When we picked locations we thought would work out for us, both in terms of the direction the sun would be, the direction that the wind would be, all of those things that Bryce takes into account when he sets these up. Buckle it up. You're gonna get some good pictures, Randy. When you take on the challenge of archery hunting, you are taking on a challenge of great proportions. There are so many things that have to happen perfectly. It's amazing that people do it. I'm bushed, you. Yeah, we worked plenty hard today. Yeah, I'm ready for some dinner. You ready for this? No. I think we're gonna get after it today. I have a good feeling about today. A lot of people, when they hear the name Randy Newberg, they're gonna say, that guy is a pronghorn junkie. And yes, I am. I, there's something about pronghorn I love. I'm a big, big score guy, I guess. I like the symmetry of animals. With Randy, he likes the non-typical type. First of all, ugly's good. I, if, if the Boone and Crockett buck is there and there's a goofy one with a funky horn or a funky prong, the Boone and Crockett buck is safe because I'm gonna shoot the ugly one. What do you think? Can we just get out to the edge of these trees and glass out that's, here yeah. as quick as it gets light? We'll see them popping up somewhere. I think that's a good idea. I'm normally one of those guys who I'm spotting and stocking. There's no way you're gonna get me to sit for hours and hours in the heat, in the dust. You know what, I like following these trails because they usually do hit water. When we first saw the antelope, we were probably 200 yards away. The tricky part on that stock was to be able to get up and over where we were in plain sight of them and then going down towards them in a little dip where we'd be hidden. When we got in there, I knew we were getting close and it was a matter of time that he was, it was the right time to move on him. Caught her wind, or just caught movement and ended up taking off. Do you believe that, Randy? Archers have the lowest success of any hunters. You gotta have something a little bit different dialed in up here. <laughs> I know it, I know it. He was so... Great job. I uh, can't believe you got up that close. To say, I'm gonna go out and I know I'm gonna be unsuccessful nine times. Why are you gonna do that? For the love of the hunt. Ready for another one? Let's go do it. All right, today's your day to shoot, friend. So. <laughs> When you decide you're gonna come out west or anywhere and go hunting, there's a lot of research involved. Even though I'm somewhat cold because I've never hunted this unit before, this research has brought us kind of to a focal point of where we're gonna be and the tactics that we're gonna employ. We had seen this guy with this one water hole that was just seems to be antelope all around it, and they had left for the weekend. And it's the only water hole, we think, for a long ways. And we had already actually set up our blinds at a crossing that he had found earlier. So we had two options, and we ended up thinking this water hole, since it's been getting really hot, was gonna work the best. So we grabbed our blinds, took off, and we set them up. I came back after that second night, kind of him and Han, eating a few words that I had profoundly stated that I could spot and stock these antelope. You wanna know what I think, Bryce? I think, what do you think? I'm not made for antelope hunting. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> and I came to the realization that it wasn't gonna work here. Yeah. So I'm all in favor of sitting that water until noonish tomorrow, sitting okay. at those blinds. sitting in a blind and these blinds are lined with black material to keep your movements at a minimum. 
and it's hot. It's 95 degrees. It's so hot. It's out on the plane. The thermometer reads 96 degrees, and we're sitting inside these black huts. So you're pretty much sitting in a charcoal oven. I always drive by when I see blinds set up in the heat of August, and I say, who would be foolish enough to do that? Well, Randy would be. We've looked this over, and there's not an antelope anywhere nearby that looks like he's coming to water tonight. No, it doesn't. Your idea that maybe we should get out of here and try to use this last hour and a half for some spot and stock on these ones we see way out there? You got my boat. All right, let's so. do it. Now we're really wondering, kind of second guessing ourselves. Wow, our two main strategies, spot and stock and blind sitting, we aren't having a lot of results. And anyone who's hunted knows the frustration that can come with your plan not working out. I had all these problems that seemed just to keep on compounding on the hunt. I would be in the blind and either the buck would not come in all the way or he'd be in the wrong spot in the blind. All that came together to just, you start getting frustrated a little bit. And we said, okay, what's going on here? We know they need water. We know the hunting pressure is congregating them out in that flat. Let's give that blind one more try. Lately we've been in a blind and it's been nice. It's just, it's kind of a relaxing hunt. It's really hot, but other than that, we're seeing a lot of animals. This morning we saw 20 plus animals. We had so many antelope. I'm thinking, is this ever gonna happen? If there are this many antelope and we can't get an opportunity, I don't know that this is gonna happen. So after all of that transpires that morning and early afternoon, Bryce says to me, look, out at 12 o'clock, here comes a buck right at us. He's right out there, straight in front of us. Man, is he limping. And at the time, he was quite a ways off. He was probably 500 yards off. It looked like he was loping more than he was walking. Let me see if I can get a better look at him. He could hardly even stop. He was had such a bad problem on that leg. And I told Bryce, I said, you know, I, even though he's not the huge buck we've been seeing in some of our scouting, I'm gonna shoot that buck if he comes in. And I'm like everybody else. I had some second thoughts about, you know, I have this great trophy tag. I know it's probably a waste of something to do on a on a trophy tag like this, but I'm not gonna let an animal. For whatever reason, this time I put it on that way. And when I drew back, my release was hitting the brim of my hat. <laughs> and so when I went to adjust my hat, my arrow goes forward and shoom, right out through the blind. <laughs> and now he turns and he's coming back in from our left to our right and Bryce says that's 25 yards and I draw back. Right there. Keep an eye on it. What are we at, 20? Here we go. Great shot, Randy. Great shot. Oh, man. Gosh, that happened so quick. I had to make up my mind. Congratulations. That's when hunting becomes pretty introspective. You know, you go through this emotions of, did I do the right thing? Did I this? Did I that? You start thinking, what are the things of this hunt that I've done that have meaning and value? He's a beautiful guy. Look at the heavy prongs on him. He's heavy. He's a nice looking buck. Look at that. And so when I walked up there, I was very happy to have taken my first archery antelope. But there was a part of me saying, you know, I feel bad for whatever had caused this animal to suffer as long as he probably had. You, you see an animal like that and you say, okay, this is a trophy tag, what do I do? And you talk about conflict. You talk about your personal ethic of who you are and what you're gonna do. You keep hunting, we got two days left, yeah. so you gotta... You either walk the walk or you don't walk the walk. Bryce and I both looked at each other and said, if you're not gonna shoot it, I'm gonna shoot it. Tells me I hunt with the right kind of guys. So. Having taken that animal and knowing that 
he was eventually going to die. Boy, in this hot weather, these animals can spoil so quick. Yep, you have to take care of them quickly and we'll do it. But at the same time, feeling thankful that I had the opportunity to take him and probably end that suffering and end what would have been continued suffering. And as a hunter, I think any of you out there, you would have done the same exact thing. Bryce, how far away were those bucks that bedded? On Your Own Adventures has its own hunting website. We've always been on this website just to hear people's stories and everything, so Randy came up with the idea, let's, let's blog this hunt. Hey Bryce, 3,900 people are living vicariously through your hunt. Nothing like putting a little pressure on you. I'm not, it doesn't seem like I'm only hunting for myself. I'm hunting for the hundreds or thousands of people that are watching us. And I think you could spot and stock him. We've done this a million times in the dish run, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. to say I was down a little bit would be an understatement. We had hunted so hard and tried so many tactics that just didn't seem to happen. There's a bunch of antelope out there. When we got to this one little herd of, of antelope, and we could see that there was a pretty nice buck in it. You know what, last day, last evening, let's try it. I looked over at Randy, I said, we have nothing to lose. We have an hour and a half of light left, the sun's at our back. I said, let's make a try for these. Out there. Okay, I'm gonna go. <laughs> That buck is walking away with his rear end to me. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna stand up and just keep, try to keep my angle where it's, I'm exactly behind him. Well, he's just kind of, I don't know if he's trying to get skinny or what, or hide behind his bow, but he's walking out there. And I'm watching this through my binoculars because he's getting closer, closer, and closer. And the suspense for me, being there watching it, my heart's just going boom, 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 boom. I kept going at the speed he was going. But when he'd stop and start feeding, I would gain that extra yardage. And he just methodically just continues his stock. But he's completely upright. So I started like walking again, just upright. Just I knew if I kept my, my angle right, it would work. And sure enough, I get within 60, and he, he turns broadside. I start my draw. He turned perfectly and I made the shot. Oh, he, look at him. Oh, I got him. I got him good. Got him good. Got him. Oh, he just tumbled. 60 yards. I cannot believe it. I am so pumped right now. It was just a huge relief to know that all this hard work had finally paid off. I knew my chance was going to come, and it, and it finally, it finally happened. <gasps> thanks, buddy. Thanks, buddy. That was awesome. Oh, what a last perfect day. shot! Last day, last day. Probably the most rewarding part of this hunt was to watch Bryce. He worked so hard, and I saw him go through these ups and downs. Of, what am I doing wrong? I'm, I've done this before. This isn't working. That isn't working. Perfect win. Perfect sun. Finally. He kept walking away, so I was like. You know, I'm just hunkering down, keep on walking, keep on walking. And then to see him get an antelope, uh, right there is why we hunt. The most rewarding part of this hunt was coming together with Randy, being able to hunt together. He, he made it happen. It's just been great. I, lo I love hunting with him, and I can't wait to do it again. <laughs> oh, what a shot. We take an archery hunt that is already difficult and challenging. We say we're gonna do it on public land, which is even more challenging. And we say we're gonna do it on our own. I, I don't know what more I could add to the mix to make a more fulfilling experience than that. Wow. Pretty buck, I'm very, very happy with him. He's gonna be great eating too. If New Mexico is willing, I have bow and will travel. I will be back to New Mexico archery antelope hunting every time they will give me a tag. Although archery hunting is more difficult to achieve success, in New Mexico, archery tags are much easier to draw. The season dates are longer, and the time of year provides reliable weather. And with 23 million acres of public land, New Mexico has room to roam.